Welcome to the third draft site tutorial. This tutorial will cover the drawing tools found in the status bar. While it is important to learn how to use commands to enter coordinates into draft site, this CAD program comes with some powerful features that can automatically do much of this for you, minimizing the need to enter commands and coordinates manually. These aids will allow you to do much of the work by simply pointing and clicking. On the status bar we see six different buttons for drawing aids. Snap, Grid, Ortho, Polar, E-Snap, and E-Track. Note that Model and Sheet are not drawing aids. These buttons can be clicked with the left mouse button, toggling them on and off, or they can be clicked with the right mouse button, pulling up a small menu with items such as settings. The first item we see in the status bar is the Snap button. According to the draft site help file, the Snap Grid is an invisible grid in the graphics area. With Snap activated, the pointer selects only points positioned directly on the snap grid. In this case, I have the snap grid set to increments of one unit. It is important to note that the snap grid affects only the pointer, but not the coordinates that are entered using the keyboard. Now let's take a look at the snap grid's settings. So we will right click on the snap button and select settings. Currently, the snap grid is set to increments of one unit. I will change those to 0.5 to half a unit and click OK. Now, as you can see, the line tool jumps in increments of half of a unit instead of one unit as it was doing previously. So now I can draw an object in half unit increments. If I would desire, I could return to settings and set the increment to 0.125 to draw in increments of one eighth of a unit or 0 0.0625 to draw in increments of 1 16th of a unit. To turn the snap on and off, you can either toggle it by clicking, or you can tap the F9 key on the top of the keyboard. Because the snap aid locks you into specific increments, you may not find it very useful for your day-to-day -day work. The next button, Grid, toggles the grid. By right-clicking and selecting Settings, we can change the spacing of the grid. Currently, it is set at 1. The grid can be turned on and off by toggling the icon or by hitting the F7 button at the top of the keyboard. The grid will stay active while you are zoomed in, however if you zoom out far enough the grid will disappear. Also, the grid is simply a graphical display. Turning on the grid does not cause the mouse to snap to the points. For this you will need to turn on the snap button. Next is the ortho button. What the ortho button does is very simple. It locks us in to four angles, 0, 90, 180, and 270. Ortho is very helpful for making sure that we draw lines at 90 degree increments. To temporarily enable ortho correction, hold the shift button on the keyboard. While in ortho mode, you can draw a line by pointing it in the direction that you desire and then entering its length. Let me draw an example. I'll click here. Now I'd like my line to go to the right 2.5 units, so I'll enter 2.5 units into the command window and hit enter. Ortho continued my line for 2.5 units on the angle that I indicated with the mouse. Now I'll draw down 2.5 units, left 2.5, and finally up 2.5 units. As you can see, I was able to draw four different directions without ever having to enter an angle into the command window. The next button is the polar button. The puller button is similar to the ortho button in that it aids us in drawing lines at correct angles. However, polar does not lock us into any angle, and the increments are customizable. To draw a line using polar, toggle the polar button so that it's on, select a line, and a starting point. Now, as I rotate the line, you can see a dashed line continuing on beyond the end of my line when I get within about 3 degrees of 90 degrees. This signifies that the polar aid has locked on and auto-corrected the angle to exactly 90 degrees. Similarly, if I go to the left, it will lock in at 180 degrees, 270, as well as 0. To change the settings for the polar aid, we just right-click on the polar button and select settings. Now we can change the increments at which the polar guide is displayed. Let me change them to 45 degrees and click OK. Now as we rotate the line, we're given the option to lock on at 45 degree increments. Just how in ortho mode we could enter a distance, we can do the same while in polar mode. Let me demonstrate. I'll move this up to a 45 degree angle, 
Then I'll enter 2.5 into the command window and hit enter. As you can see, a line 2.5 units was drawn. Now I will clean up and toggle off the puller button and move on to the next topic. eSnap stands for Entity Snap. Entity Snap is a powerful and intelligent drawing aid. The help file states that eSnap detects and snaps to geometrically significant points on drawing entities. For example, endpoints, intersections, and center points. To begin, let's start a line from the endpoint of another using the endpoint eSnap. First, I'll select the line tool from the draw toolbar, and then I will ensure that the eSnap button is toggled on. Now, as you will notice, a box has appeared at the center of the crosshairs. This box is called the gravity box. Gravity refers to the way that DraftSight pulls in the cursor over a possible eSnap. DraftSight will search the area within the gravity box for points with which to snap. As we move the crosshairs along this line, it will snap to the end point and show us a tooltip of the kind of snap being used. Now that the tooltip is displayed, I know that the snap is locked in and I can click to start my line exactly on the end point of this entity. You can change the size of the gravity box by typing in gravity to the command window. Now you can enter a new size. The default size is 5. I will be changing mine to 18. You can choose a size between 0 and 50. Setting a larger gravity box can help you as you learn what snaps are available. However, if DraftSight detects two possible e-snaps within the gravity box, you may not be able to select one of them. Notice that as I follow this line, markers appear. Each type of e-snap has a unique marker to identify it. In this case, the triangle signifies a midpoint. In the case of a square, it signifies an end point. Once a marker appears inside the gravity box, we can click and our line will be pulled in by gravity to the marker. For example, even though I'm a good distance from the end point of this line, the e-snap will correct my position. As we can see, the line's start point is not the center of the crosshair, but the end point of the line. To get a better idea of what geometric points the e-snap snaps to, we can right click on the eSnap button and select settings. Here we can see the geometry and reference eSnaps. We can also enable and disable specific snaps individually by checking or unchecking them. Or we can select all or deselect all. In this tutorial I will be explaining how to use the following eSnaps. End, midpoint, center, intersection, parallel, perpendicular, and visual intersection. If you are unsure of what an individual eSnap does, just search for Entity Snap in the Help Index. Then, double clicking on the Entity Snap article, and then clicking on the Entity Snap Modes link, we will see a list of all of the types of eSnaps with examples and also their abbreviations and markers, two things we'll be using later on in this tutorial. Now let's take a look at how to use eSnaps. First, I will draw a circle and we'll look at the center eSnap. The center eSnap snaps to the center of circles, ellipses, and arcs. To find the center of an entity, hover over the entity after you've selected your drawing tool. As you hover, a small crosshair will appear in the center of the circle. To snap to it, Move the gravity box over the center mark, and once the circle appears, you can click to start your line. Next, we'll look at the endpoint eSnap. The endpoint eSnap snaps to the endpoints of entities such as lines, arcs, or corners of rectangles. Here's a quick example. I'll hover over this line. As I move towards the end, a square appears, and I get a tooltip explaining that I'm using an endpoint eSnap. Now I can click and I've created a line at the end point of this entity. Next, we'll draw using intersection eSnaps. The intersection eSnap snaps to the intersection of two entities. For example, the intersection of the circle and this line. As you can see, an X appeared, which is the marker for the intersection eSnap. It appeared over the intersection of the circle and the line. We can see another intersection down here. If we were to click, a line would begin exactly on the intersection of the circle and the line. Next, we'll take a look at the midpoint eSnap. 
The midpoint e-snap snaps to the midpoint of a line or arc. The marker for a midpoint e-snap is a triangle. As you can see here, a triangle has appeared exactly in the middle of this entity. Now let's take a look at the perpendicular e-snap. The perpendicular e-snap requires first that we start a line. This e-snap will then aid us in drawing a line perpendicular to another entity. For example, I'll draw a line perpendicular to this box. As I move down, the marker for uh, the perpendicular e-snap appears. The marker is the 90 degree symbol. And I can click and draw a line perfectly perpendicular to this line here. The perpendicular e-snap can also help you draw lines perpendicular to circles. As I move along, a perpendicular e-snap appears. I can click, and now I have drawn a line perpendicular to this part of the circle. The parallel e-snap aids in the drawing of a line that is parallel to another line. First, I'll start a new line. Then I will hover over the line to which I wish to draw parallel. I will need to hover in an area away from other possible e-snaps, such as midpoints or endpoints. The marker for parallel is two parallel lines. Once a marker appears, hover over it for a second until a plus symbol appears. Then move the crosshairs to make your line as parallel as possible. Once you are within a few degrees of being parallel, your line will snap into place and a long dashed line will appear. Extend your line as long as you desire to draw it and click to end. We have now drawn a line perfectly parallel to this one. As I mentioned earlier, specific e-snaps can be disabled and enabled through e-snap settings. However, you can also temporarily force DraftSite to use a specific eSnap by entering an eSnaps abbreviation into the command window. Remember, we found this abbreviation in the help file. This can be useful when you have a hard to get eSnap. Another way to temporarily enable an eSnap is to right click while drawing. In the menu that appears, select eSnap overrides and then select the type of eSnap you desire to use. For example, the visual intersection eSnap snaps to the projected intersection of two lines. If I desire to start a line on a projected intersection, I would first execute the line command and then enter the APPINT command. This will enable only the apparent intersection eSnap. Then I will select the first line as it's prompting me to do. I'll click on this line. Then the second line, all I need to do is hover over and the eSnap will appear. As soon as I click, I'll begin drawing a line from the apparent intersection of these two lines. It is important to note that some settings may interfere with one another. For example, if you have the nearest e-snap enabled, it may interfere with the parallel snap. Let me demonstrate. To use the parallel snap, we're instructed to first start a line, then indicate the line we want to draw parallel to by hovering over it until the parallel e-snap marker appears. Let's try this. As you can see, the parallel e-snap marker, two parallel lines, does not appear. We only see the nearest marker. Now let's disable the nearest marker in settings and try again. Now, as you can see, the parallel marker appears. The blue line has appeared and we can draw a parallel line. As an alternative to disabling the nearest e-snap, we could have typed in PAR, the abbreviation for the parallel eSnap, into the command window and hit enter. This would have specified to DraftSite that we were only desiring to do parallel eSnaps. Also, we could have right clicked, gone to eSnap overrides, and selected parallel from the menu. Now let's move on to the last button of the drawing aids, eTrack. eTrack is a tool that helps you draw in relationship to other entities by displaying guides and markers to which you can snap. E-Track works in conjunction with eSnap. Because of this, eSnap must be enabled for eTrack to function correctly. Before we begin using eTrack, we need to verify its settings by right-clicking on the eTrack button and clicking Settings. We need to make sure that all three boxes are checked. The third option allows us to use the Shift key to acquire an inference or tracking point. Now that all three options are selected, I will hit OK. And now I'm going to clean up our drawing area and draw a rectangle. Inside of this rectangle we will draw a circle whose center will also be the center of the rectangle. To begin using eTrack guides, execute the drawing command of the entity which you wish to draw, in this case a circle. 
Now I will double check that both E snap and E track are turned on, and now I will hover over the midpoint of this line. When the tooltip appears, we know that the tracking point has been set. I will now set another point on the top line by hovering over it. Now I have two active E track points. As you can see, when I am directly above, below, or to the left or right of an E track point, a dotted guide appears. By placing the gravity box over the guide, we are able to snap to it, as you can see by the red X. And we can also snap to the intersection of two guides. As you can see, a red X has appeared at the intersection of the two dotted lines. When I click, the center of the circle will snap to that X. And now I will draw my circle. When it comes to acquiring points by hovering over them, draft sight can be finicky. Because of this, we've enabled the shift button in settings. If at first a point does not acquire, hover over it and tap the shift key to acquire it manually. So I'll select a line, hover over this midpoint, and toggle the inference point with the shift key. It's off. Now toggle it on by hitting the shift key. And this will conclude the tutorial.